Hi guys, welcome to the Church Split. My name is Will, and you know what we do here. We have to escape your church's echo chamber, learn to think biblically, and of course, challenge the status quo. That always needs challenging. But first, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Church Split if you enjoy this video. Also, comment below, and please support me on Patreon if you'd like. You can support as low as $1 a month, and that does help this channel keep running. So anyway, with all the internet stuff out of the way that nobody cares about, let's go ahead and start talking about people do care about, which is apparently the 2024 Olympics. The My entire feed has been on fire regarding this entire situation. And for those of you who have been living under a rock, the 2024 Olympics opened up with a ceremony, as it always does. But part of that ceremony was a big performance with a bunch of drag queens, which is men dressed as women, and apparently a trans woman, which is oddly enough, enough just a man dressed as a woman. So you have these these tr drag queens or trans women, or they all look like trans to me for all I know. But anyway, you have all these people who did this big performance. And at the end of the performance, they all took a place behind a table and allegedly paid homage or a mock or whatever you want to call it of the Lord's Supper. Now, the reason why I want to cover this is because I have seen Christians at each other's throats. Some say, I don't see how this is a connection to the Lord's Supper besides a bunch of people standing behind a table. And other people will go, this is obviously a part of the Lord's Supper and making a mockery of our Lord and Savior. So what do we do? How do Christians handle this? Well, I actually think the answer is relatively simple. So let's pull up the image here. Now, what you see here is a guy in the blue is Dionysus. Dionysus is the Greek god of wine, nature, festivities, essentially. And that's what they're, he's supposed to represent, okay? Then you have the woman there with the aura behind her or the halo behind her. And she is supposed to represent Christ, allegedly, to some people. But she's at the center of the table where Christ would be if this was a Lord's Supper depiction. And then, of course, you have everyone else there who is all behind the table. You get the idea. Now... Whether this is a mockery of the Lord's Supper or not, we are going to tackle this from both directions because this gentleman here says, actually, no, this is a depiction of another painting, which is about the Greek gods and a feast that they were having. And then you have other people uh, like this article that specifically says, apparently in the French, uh, I do not read French. So Google Translate is helpful if you actually want to be that monotonous about it. But that says, no, no, this definitely was um, the Lord's Supper. And then actually the official statements are even contrary because you have the people ahead of the 2024 Olympics that basically said, nope, this is not intended to be a depiction of the Lord's Supper. We did not mean to offend anybody. We are so sorry. And that's mainly because even the Olympics are supposed to not be political. They're not supposed to be anti-religious or for or against any religion. They're supposed to be like politically and religiously neutral because it's the coming together of all these different nations from all these different backgrounds who just compete, right? And it's like supposed to be this fun thing. And I remember growing up, my family always had the Olympics on when it was something we actually looked forward to, especially the Winter Olympics. We watched a, a lot of that stuff. My mom was obsessed with watching the ice skating uh, and that sort of thing. So the Olympics was something fun that my family always did. And this was something that we could come all together and, across the entire globe and compete and enjoy. Now, that said, then there's the other aspect of this whole thing, which is, well, uh, these other people have actually said, yes, the artists themselves, we did take inspiration from The Last Supper of, by Da Vinci. So the official people behind the Olympics say, nope, that wasn't the intent. And the artists themselves say, yes, we did draw inspiration from that. And so who do you wish to choose? Who do you choose to listen to? It's up to you. Look, I am cynical enough, though, to believe that the people ahead of the 2024 Olympics are just doing damage control. And also, they probably had no idea what the art was. I, they probably have no idea what's even going on under their nose. And if you are in France, you would know that France is very liberal and you shouldn't be too surprised that French liberals do what French liberals would do. And here's the reality as well. Guys, we live in Babylon. Like this, that that's what the West is anymore. We are Babylon reincarnated. Okay. That is the situation that we're in. So and I'd be curious also if this entire performance was even like aired to places like the Middle East. I, I have a feeling not. But anyway. So let's continue on. And actually, DJ Barbara Butch, um, who was the woman standing in front of the little halo or aura, she says, I'm a fat Jewish queer lesbian, and I'm really proud. So we see right here that there is an agenda, or at least this person is pushing for this agenda. And that is part of this. Now, here's the also the reality. You had a bunch of drag queens, you had a trans person. And if you actually see there are images of it, you can find it. And I don't suggest that you do you can just take my word for it. Uh, I found it against my will scrolling through Twitter. And uh, there was one of the gentlemen had his scrotum hanging out of his like miniskirt. So there are there was 
open nudity in front of children at this event. There's open nudity in front of the entire world at this event, not including the problem with the trans thing. Now, here's the other issue. They're supposed to be an apolitical and a religious organization. And there is nothing apolitical about putting drag queens on display for everyone and glorifying that, making it out like this, this is great, awesome thing. Now, I have a few more things to say about this before I move on to my other slides. But here's the thing. First and foremost, let's say this is a depiction of the Lord's Supper. This shouldn't become as a, this shouldn't come as a surprise because to the West, nothing is sacred anymore. In fact, most everything is made to be inverted and mocked. I was actually quite shocked the other day. So my my family and I, we stopped having Disney Plus ages ago because what I chose to do was to stop supporting Disney because of all the nonsense that they were putting out. Uh, that's when you look at the Acolyte. Now you have like lesbian space witches that are uh, running things. Uh, you have all the other like girl boss woke nonsense that is going on in the mainstream MCU. And I'm not just saying that because there's women leads. I actually have no problem with a woman lead. One of my favorite movies of all times, Alien and Aliens by Ridley Scott. And let me just say Sigourney Weaver in that is a very powerful feminine figure. I have no problem with that. But what we see here is an inversion of all the roles happening. And this is something that a lot of people rightfully call satanic. And if you look, I mean, I know the satanic temple was a thing from like, did it wasn't established until like the 60s. But there is a truth to this aspect that there is always an inversion. There's a reason why even their statue itself is uh, like female at the top and male on the bottom. It's this whole inversion of God's creation. And we also see this happening in media where those things that were traditionally considered good are flipped on themselves. Even villains now are trying, they're trying to humanize villains and like give them you know, nuance and all that. So what was shocking to me actually recently was my daughter is three and she, of course, loves cartoons that have songs in them, right? So we went through the Frozen stage, we're going through a Little Mermaid stage, but one of the things I showed her the other day, if you guys, I think it came out in 97, 98, but there's a movie called A Quest for Camelot or The Quest for Camelot. And I was shocked at how unnuanced the villain was how the goodness was actually good like it was about virtue and valor because it's you know it's an Arthurian legend and that is actually something that we are missing now that's why Narnia and Lord of the Rings is still so popular because you have a strong good versus evil themes and now we don't see that anymore we see an inversion of it where we kind of we kind of go well a villain what is evil is a little bit more nuanced than that some of them are just misunderstood and on top of that what is a woman is just really misunderstood and there's all these things that are constantly being inverted so with all the things that we got going on in our culture right now we should not be overly surprised when they make a parody or a mockery of the great painting by leonardo da vinci depicting our lord and savior jesus christ now, the obvious thing is if this would if this is the Lord's Supper, which I believe it is, a depiction of it based on what the artists have said, then okay, they're mocking our Lord and Savior, which is exactly what Christ said was going to happen. You know, the Lord the Lord warned us that the world would hate us, but they hated him first. So we shouldn't be surprised there. Uh, the other issue is the very fact that um, not only is the Lord's Supper that w was mocked, but then also there is the problem. And, this, and people are rightfully angry, by the way, because even though we shouldn't be surprised, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be upset about it because we also see the, the inversion of everything that is great now not being great. Remember, I mentioned the Star Wars issue, uh, Indiana Jones. I could keep going on all these different franchises that have been destroyed. But these franchises are works of art, right? Like movies are a work of art. Video games, you see the same thing. If you're familiar with Gamergate 2, essentially, uh, the sequel to the original Gamergate, where you see Sweet Baby Inc. putting their... Uh, like their LGBTQ agendas in everything and their uh, intersectionality and their race nonsense all in these games, which are also art, artistic expressions. But now we see classical art being inverted into a modern day thing. This is something that we see continually. It is the inversion of that which was always beautiful. And things that were really great artistic expressions are, are being hijacked continually to depict something new. And there's a reason for that. And that's because art communicates in a way that nothing else does. Art is a very unique expression that can reach people at a deeper level. That is why 
things like Star Wars have been hijacked. That is why Leonardo da Vinci's paintings are being hijacked. That is why these things are happening because they're taking these original great ideas and co-opting them for their own political and social gain because there is nothing that communicates to people on a deeper level than art. And how do you normalize that sort of behavior? You normalize it by just going with it, by rocking it and doing it and pushing it in everyone's faces. And to the point where people just go, oh, this is normal. Why is it weird? Because it's like when you ever you talk to a kid who was raised in a really rough home and you go, wow, how would that make you feel? And most of them will be like, I don't know, it's just my normal. If it is your normal and you normalize it and you continually to push it and put it in front of people's faces as normal, then people will forget what once made something great and instead start latching on to that, which is new, which is why I think that we haven't seen really Disney or others stop from the direction they've been going, because if they can brainwash the next generation enough into these ideals, then they will start making money strongly on those the next generation, right? I mean, they just have to make enough to say, keep afloat. But if you're trying to actually push a social agenda, you are going to continually be pushing various ideals onto the next generation and in front of people's faces to normalize it. So we have a lot of classical and classic things that are beautiful that are being destroyed. And it's not because they're not aware of what they're doing. They're very aware of what they're doing. And they understand that art can impact people deeper. And this was something Christians actually used to acknowledge, which is why da Vinci himself was a Christian. These were people who lived in, and now granted, I'm not saying that they all were the world's greatest Christians of all time. In fact, a lot of these original artists were Christians. I mean, Michelangelo, has some incredible art and i mean look at the age he got it done too if nothing makes you feel like un an underachiever <laughs> michelangelo will and then you also have these original like people even now in more the more modern era in the era of cinema in the era of video games that there's art artists who are there who are pushing certain messages and that's the whole point of art is to depict something beautiful to impact you deeper music is the same way there's a reason why people know that music can impact people a certain way which is why a lot of churches seek to have really good quality music and stuff because they know that they can that a three minute, four minute song can, can can communicate on a deeper level than sometimes a 45 minute lecture. These are the sorts of things. Art is gonna be continually co-opted by Babylon because Babylon wants you to become a Babylonian. So they're going to take all those little artistic things and they're going to keep inverting it, okay? So if you've been paying attention to any of the pop culture stuff, this is really not that much of a surprise. It is just another notch in the belt because the point is, is that they, they've they already taken all your favorite franchises. They've already taken all your favorite news outlets. Now they're going to take the Olympics and they're going to keep taking until you do what we just can do, which is simply stop consuming. Now let's go ahead and quickly talk about that for a minute. Let's say it's not a depiction of the Lord's Supper and it's not a complete uh, contamination of that which was sacred or beautiful. And let's say instead it was just a Greek pagan festival homage. Okay, great. So that's still bad <laughs> because the Olympics, by the way, was a thing that the pagans did. And then this is uh, showing that France, a once very Christian country, is now becoming a more pagan country increasingly each and every day. So what are what should be Christians really be outraged about? Honestly, a parody of a famous painting of my Lord and Savior is something I'm actually less upset about because I don't expect the world always to respect my art or art that represents my beliefs or that which I believe is sacred. But I'm more outraged by the pure debauchery that was on display for families to see that normalizes various things uh, to the world. If they don't, they do not believe in Jesus Christ. They probably just look at that Da Vinci painting as something like Mona Lisa. But what we see here instead is actually a, an attempt to normalize the feminization of men, of uh, uh, destroying and undercutting men which of course, that's what you want to do if you want to destroy societies, you want to cut down men, you want to cut down standard like 
masculine leadership. You want to destroy those things because I mean, and the, you can look at the data on this. Men psychologically tend to be disagreeable. Women tend to be agreeable. So the softer you can make the men, the more likely you can make society pliable as a whole. And the more you reach the children, especially the more you can make it that way. So that shouldn't come to a, as a surprise to anyone. So even if it wasn't a depiction of the Lord's Supper, Christians should still be upset because this is a normalization of the feminization of men, which means an inversion of the image of God of which and the purpose of which God, men were made for. So we should be upset about that. But we are also told to be angry and sin not. You know what Christians really need to do? is put their money where their mouth is. Uh, if something keeps going against your beliefs and it keeps making a mockery, vote with your dollar, vote with your time. Just boycott it. Don't watch it. Uh, cancel your subscription. You might go, but there's some shows on that I like. Who cares? Is it really worth it? And this is something I've been doing more and more. And we are actually seeing right now, there is an inversion happening where finally the silent, the, the silent group is finally going, no, enough's enough we're done. And that doesn't mean you have to become violent. You don't have to become the next Islam, you know, this whole like, oh, we're not going to tolerate, we're going to like, fight you literally. But we can rise up and go, but I don't have to consume it either. I don't have to support this either. I can walk away from this. So do it. That is what I would encourage most Christians to do. If this really is going that much against your conscience, and you're tired of it as much as the rest of us are, then just stop voting voting with your dollar uh, to support it vote the opposite. So cut your support. That's what I would do. Because they're going to keep going until they hear enough pushback. And what we're seeing now in the media world, especially like in movies and video games, so many people are getting tired of it, that people in these companies are losing more and more and more money and are almost panicking because they are being driven into the ground. Recently, just watch all the controversy around the recent show, The Acolyte by, from Star Wars, or look at all the pushback that Amazon has received from not just the Rings of Power, but apparently season four of The Boys being extremely uh, LG, like LGBT woke and like liberal and all that, even though that show was always a liberal show and always one filled with debauchery. But that should tell you something that there if there's pushback from people who are just tired of it that's how you do it voice your opinion make it known and then support properly with your dollars uh that's that's what i would do i mean just otherwise don't be surprised when babylon's babylon christians like do we shouldn't be like it they they've mocked the lord's supper and i mean i do believe that they did and there's also something that's oddly poetic about it so let's say it's the lord's supper so all these drag queens get up there to depict the Lord's Supper, but the Lord's Supper was a time was was painted during a time of Christianity, right? Of when Christianity was by far the majority in Europe, and that's when that painting was painted. And now you have a bunch of drag queens depicting it, showing the absolute degradation of that society. And then you have Dionysus who comes up on the plate to bring about, about the Olympic ceremony. If this isn't a depiction of the death of Christianity in the West and the rise of paganism, I don't know what is. Oddly enough, the artist might not have intended for that to be the message, but it is clearly the message that I and others are receiving. The West is dying and becoming more and more pagan again. And that is the message to understand. Now, the other problem is, is that there's other Christians out there who are absolutely losing their minds. Uh, Officer Tatum on YouTube, he was like, okay, well, if you're able to mock my Lord and Savior, and you're able to lock, mock my faith, then I get to mock you and call you a 400 pound, blah, 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 like mocking the woman representing Christ there uh, for being overweight. And then there's others who are saying like, you know, F you trans people, I hope you burn in hell, things like that on Twitter. But then there's other people like this one, which I found I should, I feel like I should bring up. She said, I am sick of this. I'm a Muslim and I'm sick of this. Why aren't Christians doing anything? Why are you weak? Which I find kind of ironic because this is somebody who's a Muslim and clearly does not understand the Christian faith. Because to Muslims uh, and Islam in general, you show strength through force, which is what they do and have done. And I don't care if that's an unpopular thing to say. It just, it's, the, it's the running issue in Islam. There's a reason why even peaceful sects of Islam will not condemn the acts of the violent ones. And that is because this actually is part of their religion. It is part of the, the, the jihad. That is the point. Um, 
So, but she is depicting Christians not having crazy, violent outbursts as weakness. This is the exact same thing that Andrew Tate does. Completely ignoring the fact of a central tenet of the Christian faith, which is that we might be mocked, but we are to take comfort that Christ was mocked first. Christ said nothing to his grave and died a humble death before his enemies at a faux trial and betrayed. And he did not fight violently. In fact, he made a martyr of himself. He gave himself over to the crowd to be killed. Of course, to rise again and bring the ultimate victory of the of the Lord. But the reality is Christ laid himself down during all that. And then Peter tells us to look at that suffering and to live by it, live, li live to the suffering of Christ. Because as he didn't say anything to his death, neither should we. And if he's going to be persecuted in such a way, we need to be willing to be persecuted in such a way. That's why it doesn't make us weak. It actually makes us strong because it says, that's what Paul says, right? In our weakness, he is strong. The whole point in the New Testament is continually that message that we take peace in the strength of Christ to go through the persecution and suffering. So that way we can overcome evil with good because calling someone 400, 400 pounds and fat and all these other things saying that you hope these people burn in hell isn't going to help anything is feeding your flesh and it's going against what the Lord has told us to do, which is to stand strong in the face of adversity, to turn the other cheek, to love our enemies and to pray for those who despitefully use us. That is our calling. That is what we are supposed to do. So we shouldn't be not only not should we not be surprised, but we should just take this in peace is what we should do and voice our concerns. No one says you can't have a voice. Yes, say that you're it's wrong. Say that it's evil. Say that you're offended. That's fine. But what's not fine is to act out violently. And this is, of course, somebody who has no idea. Uh, and by the way, Christians are sick of this, too. Christians have been speaking up about this in the West long before Muslims became a very overly popular religion in the West. Christians have been talking about this forever. And normally I'm very critical of Christian outrage culture because it's just, I don't know, it's, so, it's very cringy a lot of times, right? We all remember the Starbucks cups. Usually it's a very, very loud majority. But... This is one of those situations where it's like, no, Christians, you can be vocal about this. Be vocal. Let people know that you are still standing strong on your Christian values and on your faith, and that's okay. But you shouldn't be surprised when Babylon is Babylon. And if you think that's a problem, you're right. But you should probably cease to having a meltdown and fight your neighbor over it. Uh, it's not That's not probably not beneficial. Um, in fact, real quick. Right here, we have um, a, a, a post of my friend, uh, Chris. I'm not going to say his last name. I don't want to get him in trouble. Uh, but I, he wrote this out, and I thought this was really well put. He goes, all right, suppose just for kicks that it wasn't about the Last Supper, even though the producers of the Paris Olympics themselves say that it drew inspiration from the famous Da Vinci painting. And, se and the segment was called, the I'm not actually going to try to pronounce it because I can't do French. He's like, if that does, isn't enough, I don't know what to tell you. Suppose that's not really the name and suppose the producers don't know what's going on in their own events. Suppose it's just depicting Dionysus from another painting and telling humans we need to be nicer to each other. Is that any better? Clearly not. It's still a slap in the face to a classic painting, having the participants as drag people, because that would go against all their values of the of their original artist. It's still shoving alphabet garbage in our faces, and it's still pagan. The creator of the thing even said, the idea was to have a pagan celebration connected to the gods of Olympus. The best way to do that today would be to start, to, would be to take something known and baptize it into the alphabet soup and think about the claimed message of the act according to the official X account of the Olympics. I quote, the interpretation of the Greek god Dionysus makes us aware of the absurdity of violence between human beings. Do they know like anything about Greek mythology? Ever read the Iliad where it's the gods themselves that take sides with the humans and manipulate them into the Trojan War? Greco-Roman literature is chock full of gods absolutely loving war. They couldn't get enough of it. 
even for their own goals, this is a horrible example to pick. A much better demonstration would have been the biblical vision of peace and righteous, uh, peace for the righteous, where they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Isaiah two four, but that should be de- but that would be divisive, and we wouldn't want that. <laughs> and I could not agree with my friend Chris E. More that is exactly what it is because that's the whole thing. Well, this was a depiction of peace amongst nations by using Greek gods. The Greeks were not peaceful people, and the Greek gods most certainly were not. Because that was the example that they set. But the example Christ sets is that we live self-sacrificially and that we live peaceably with all men. As far as it depends on us, that we live peaceably with all men. Why? So that people can see our good works and might be brought to Christ because we might suffer and still be the good. That is the reality. We can suffer and still be the good. And that good shines much brighter when people are persecuting you. And if you show them an ounce of worldliness and sin in your response, all you're going to do is prove to them that Christians can't live up to the words of Christ. And we can live up to that. That's why we're ordered to. This commandment is not too far from us. We can achieve that, but we have to live in peace with one another. And the outrage is, is deserved. But I think Christians need to be careful about how they express that outrage. It's okay to express that you mocked the sacred, that you mocked a a faith that you would never mock of anyone else's, right? You wouldn't mock Islam that way, Buddhism the same way, Hinduism the same way. No, but you mocked our faith. And that is a problem. And And even Joe Rogan has acknowledged it. Christianity is a popular religion to make fun of. It's the one that can be mocked the most, and it seems like nobody cares. And it's because the West is sawing off its own legs, right? So Christianity is the foundation of the West, and we are over here just breaking it apart. We are removing it more and more from underneath us and making a mockery of our own origin of what made the West so great and so unique compared to the rest of the world. We are sawing our own legs off, and we eventually will be crippled. And that is the way of Babylon. Uh, there's a song by Atalus that said, uh, Babylon, we'll build her again, that great city of man. But this time, I'm sure she will stand. And that is a very depressing, truthful statement. We will continually build Babylon, even if we get the, the United States and France and all these places to be right with God. Babylon will be built again somewhere else because that is the nature of man. There's nothing new under the sun. So we just need to pray for God's guidance and his mercy. And I'm praying that the Lord will return soon. <laughs> Honestly, though, the father knows knows best on when to come. And so we just need to be looking forward to the second coming of Christ and bring the gospel to others. And Christians, if you're tired of this, which I am, just vote with your dollar. Why give the people money if you don't have to? I get that there's certain things that like we all have to shop and we all have to buy. So there's certain companies that might support these things. We have to support everything. And you can start making your voices known. And your voices mean very little if they still get your views and they still get your money, which is why I have started just spending more money on places where I'd, that I'd rather support uh, for the similar services. I would rather support people who support my values who aren't shoving certain things down my family's throat. And I think that's the best solution. Show the fact that, yeah, people are tired of it. That is what we prefer. So anyway, guys, uh, this is that's my take on this whole situation, that Babylon is Babylon. Babylon is going to keep being Babylon. And that if it's the Lord's Supper, a depiction of the Lord's Supper, it is simply a destruction of our that which is beautiful again. And if it's not, then it's a return to paganism. Either way, both are bad. We should not be okay with either one of them. And we should not be okay with our children being exposed to them. And I am sick and tired of us just not voicing it. So I'm glad people are speaking up, but I would encourage you as you speak the truth to do so with love, with grace, and with wisdom. So anyway, with all that said, guys, this has been the church split. We'll see you on the next episode. So take care and God bless.